Now on this episode of the ATA 207 series, Kevin and I are chatting about polishing pad pressure. Now there's a myth of as you're polishing, you're going back and forth on the last pass, you lift up and then you do one tiny little pass to kind of release the uh, abrasives, kind of fine, refine once again to sort of jewel polish the paint. And again, that is false. And Kevin and I chat about where that came from, where that sort of methodology came from and why it's false with today's technology. I hope you find it interesting. Talk a lot, does it work real faster? <laughs> They're getting made fun of already. I am using a polish and I'm using a microfiber finishing disc. Larry's using a cutting disc and a different machine. So just goes to show that he's using his favorite setup, I'm using mine, and we'll get a very similar result. I am doing a quick mow down. I'm loading up a lot of paint, but I'm gonna clean that in a minute. I expect a little bit of scouring, but I wanna knock out this first section. All right, so on the, um, the forums and whatnot, or whatever on the internet, <sighs> there is uh, you know, a thing going around where people are saying, hey, on that last pass, that beautification pass, lift off and sort of feather well, that's been around for as long as I can remember polishing and not just in random orbital, but rotary and it sounds really good, but with, with super refined abrasive, loaded abrasive, and the compounds, let's, let's talk about that, non-diminishing abrasive. They take the, the most refined abrasive they, they can locate, put it into a, a compound, spend two years designing this compound. Uh, or polish, and we have microfibers that are, you know, best in the world. Foam pads. That just, we have e the best of everything, and then we dial in a procedure. I spend time figuring out how much speed, pressure, tilt, all those type of things. But if I don't lighten up at the end, I'm not getting a great result. Right. Do you mow your lawn and then, in the last few passes, bump it up a couple notches? <laughs> Do you? What? <laughs> this is really funny. Well, I'm just saying at the racetrack, if you could adjust your tire pressure on the last couple laps, like I got to catch this guy, I'm in the lead, or we're side by side. Yeah. I know what I'm going to do to get the best out of this. I'm going to drop my tire pressure. Yeah, we're, we're dialing in a procedure. The products are designed to be highly consistent. If your procedure delivers consistent results, why would you change it at the end? It does sound like it's reasonable. Would you, would you sand with 3,000 grit or 5,000 grit and then lighten up on the last few passes? No. Okay. It's not an exact analogy, but it's similar in where if, if I took this pad, primed it, blew out all the excess, right. there's still going to be some liquid with abrasive grains stuck to the microfiber or the foam. It's consistently applied. Okay, when I turn on the machine, they're stuck in place. They're going to move at the exact same rate and motion as the machine, mm. just like a sanding disc. Right. Why would I then not lighten up on the sanding disc? Well, do you think it's like old mentality, old thought process from diminishing abrasives well, like that like never be. went away? It could be, but the other problem is, is let's say you do lighten up on the last few passes and you unload the pad. Uh, number one, if you, are, if you have the pad planted and then you lighten up, it's unplanted. Now your speed jumps up, okay? Sure. Now, so what happened with the speed adjustment? So you're adjustment? not like squeegeeing anymore. Right, and then you, if you have a, a random orbital and the backing plate doesn't fully support the pad, which a lot of them don't, now you've got change of speed. We've shown that how the patterns change with speed and pressure. That's all gone out the window. That's changed. And now anything that was stuck to these strings that are not in complete contact or running fast are now stuck and dragging and scouring. It's just You're basically on, throwing like on, a curveball in the last second of your polish. It sounds like the right thing to do, but it's really not. And I haven't been in a situation where I thought, wow, I really wish I would have lifted up on the last few passes. And that's what I try to do with my entire polishing philosophy is to say, do I need this product? Do I need this machine? Have I sat behind the wheel of a 21 and thought, man, I sure wish I had a 15 right now. If I did, then I would get one. But if I'm happy with the 21 in, in this size pad, I'm going to stick with it. I've never had that happen. Do you understand where I'm going? Is, right. is that if there's a reason, or an actual reason, like, wow, I noticed the difference. And I think if you're doing proper procedure these days with our liquids, our pads, our machines, I don't think that is something you need to do. And I think it will be detrimental. Mm. Yeah. 
Well, so does that, that answer it? That answers that, that question. That's in right. a nutshell? In a nutshell. <laughs> Massive yeah. question. Okay. Get to work, huh? Now I'm getting yelled at for talking? Hmm? <laughs>